Arachaldeon Sailo. Good afternoon. We're going to commence uh, the press conference, uh, an official section press conference of the film La Voz en Off, voiceover. We have with us the director, Christian Jimenez, the actresses Ingrid Isense and Maria Siebald, and the producers and producers Augusto Mate, Jolene Gaye, and Nadia Tugensev, who, who they are all eagerly awaiting to listen to your first question. So, please, who wants to ask that first question? Yes, there's this question there in the center. Please. Hi, good morning. What drew my attention was the use of chats and uh, internet, or whether that was intentional, whether it had to do something to, to counterpose the secrets, uh, the underlying secrets, and the difficulty that the characters have to, to, talk, among, to talk to each other. Hi. Well, obviously, I the internet, to, in a certain way, is characterized by the radical transparency that it offers in its connection to the world if we compare it to more traditional media. And in that sense, uh, what you're saying is quite logical. It's not necessarily something that was addressed in those specific terms from my point of view. What I'm very interested in is the way in which this family that lives in a provincial town in the south of Chile and in that sense, it's a very provincial type context. At the same time, there's a coexistence of experiences and situations that we can describe as being contemporary or, go or global that don't necessarily annul the provincial side of things that existed in the town beforehand. But all the contrary, there's a coexistence that is contradictory. And that contradiction or that conflict can also be comical or dramatic. Further questions, please. Yes, over there. Why did you choose, as a character, a Sikh with a turban, uh, clearly identified, culturally speaking? It has to do with the same thing I was talking a moment ago about the existence of what we could call more global experiences in a provincial context. It's, it's a film reference, like many people have asked, is linked to with experiences of the real life, which also served us as an inspiration to make this film. I, I think it simply talks about the rampant individualism that gives us an extensive range of possibilities that in Valdivia, in the south of, Ch of Chile, in a provincial town, it's possible that someone can simply want to live that way and addresses not it not because of where he was born, because he individually chooses to, ch uh, to take that journey as a Sikh. And that obviously, in this case, offers dramatic as well as com comical uh, situations for the story. Buenos dias. Hi, good morning, or good afternoon, better said. Over there. I would like to see, where are you? I would like to know how this film upon a, a secret uh, in a loud voice, that is to say, it's a secret, that Latin American quality, they were practically, we all know everything, but we don't want to talk about it. And uh, rumors and gossip uh, move around what the real subject matter is all about. I would like to know whether it's a subject that that's always being alluded or uh, to in the Chilean society or not. Yes, I think it's very Chilean, and that's true. Initially, I was very interested in working upon the relationships of the inside the family and the conflict between generations because of the different horizons and these horizons have very little uh, 
common space between them. But apart from communication or lack of communication or codes that have nothing in common with each other, I progress to that place where the presence of secrets started to take more protagonism, become more important, that more than simply a double standard or a or to not confront a problem has to do with not saying it, uh, literally, to not, to, to not put certain events in the world of language, in the world of the words. Someone drives an event to an area which would be an area of silence, as we could call it. And when those events enter into that space, not necessarily do they stop being present, do they stop being alive, and they stop being producing so much pain and disturbance. And, and in that sense, the presence of these secrets, the presence of something that is latent, latent but is not understood and that never is captured a whole 100 percent, turned into the life that I investigated, I understood of what the film was about. That's why it has the protagonism it has in the film that you've seen on the screen. In the back, please. Hi. There's a moment in the film, the character of the father says there are many actresses who are very poor but they make a lot of money were well, you thinking of anyone in particular because at least here the idea i have is not i don't know in chile and hollywood but it's, i think here the actors are quite regularly paid they're not paid over the top if you get what i'm saying well yes i'm not going to give you any names but it is it's a little joke on the side. It's just basically saying, not necessarily do you have to be a great actor to make a lot of money. In general, the actors make a lot of money are those that appear in the soap opera series. But the majority of the actors, as is the case of Sophia, the character in our film, sometimes they've got great difficulties and they don't always manage to make a living with what they know how to do. But it is. It's a little private it's an in, it's an in-house joke, but I'm not going to give you any names. Hi, Christian. Congratulations for the film. I belong from uh, to uh, to a media company in Cordoba, Argentina, and I always drew my attention when I watched the film, and I and I forget that I'm seeing a, a film. But the relationship between the mo two main actresses hit me quite strong in their role as sisters. I think they did it as if they were really sisters. I would like to ask uh, you about that. How was um, that work? Whether you have to direct them? Did you, did you have to do extra, extra time? And, and the acting and the performance of both of the sisters, how did you carry that out? Well, I directed the actors, and that's where the director's got to have the control. The only aspect in which I was helped was that of the kids or the children because which was quite intensive and very demanding within the film and I had some help but in everything else I did it on my own. There was some, a lot of investigation with sisters when I was writing and then when I worked well, more than anything we didn't rehearse too much but we did talk a lot. They had a lot of tennis classes to and tennis, tennis lessons, and they were the rehearsals, yes. Let me, can I tell us, we didn't know how to play tennis, so therefore our first approach to the characters was in the training of the tennis lesson. That's where we met because we'd, we'd never worked together before. And just as we were working, those points that were going to be in the film, the, the relationship started to build on the tennis court. And that was a great help to construct the characters. And I think important for me, I think, was that complicity and that we have uh, between us in the film. It's because we spent a whole month shooting away from home. We were in Valdivia. And to a certain extent, you've got, to, you've got to create relations, you as a person, all of the actors in the same hotel or wherever. So therefore, generated a friendship, so to speak. And that was because we were far away from our homes. We didn't have anyone else to talk to that apart from us. So that's why perhaps it was a bit more intense. When they played tennis, they understood that they want to beat each other. They got, I mean, they, they became kids. 
and uh, also I also judge my children uh, outside the plateau, uh, outside the set well, after after shooting. Any further questions? Yes. I would like. Could you talk about the production? Was it very difficult to get the money, and how was that process? I give the floor now to the producers. Okay. Yes, but it's never easy to make a film, and even less so in Chile. Exactly, and I'm taking uh, these words. To make a film in Chile is quite difficult. The very scarce amount of funds and the opportunities of presenting funds, submitting funds, are very few on a yearly basis, and. Specifically for this film, we we didn't have the support of the Ministry for Culture, but for the but we got it. It was considered a telefilm more than a film for cinema theatres, public funds uh, that supported us. But the film received for, foreign financing before receiving Chilean financing. And, Chilean financing shows how interesting it is at the present moment. And I think Julie and Nadia can also talk about what it was the f to achieve financing in your countries. We were able to see there was a great... Uh, we in France, it was pretty crazy to get the finance. And we got the uh, Cinema du Monde for cinema to, in order to achieve the, the finance. But that after that, it was very difficult. Art... They liked the Olivier Pair films, but there's a commission, and at the end, it was a great letdown. And then we managed, and we paid it with La Sophie, with that other type of financing in France. So therefore, it was a very little small amount. The truth be said. Gracias al Ciense. Yes, in this sense, I would like to ask you about the the cinema in, in, under construction in San Sebastian and Toulouse. I think uh, voiceover was in cinema under construction in Toulouse. Um, is that important for you and for directors? From the creative point of view, I think it's very interesting because it's a moment in which the films are halfway done and the possibility of having a presentation be to the industry that that's very interesting vis-a-vis -vis the possibility of concluding the film difficult with these things like um, you register or you select it and then uh, you don't know at which stage you will be when you show it so basically we've shown the film a little bit green at uh, Toulouse but still it raises the interest and then we had two more months of editing, so you can imagine, you know, how the film was when we shown it and how it is now. Bien, más preguntas, por favor, sí. Any further questions? Yes, please. Way, um, about the reason why you continue to work with Christian, because it's not the first movie you're doing together, so what brings you together? We met uh, Christian in Tokyo. We were with our first, first film we produced with um, Rouge International, with Nadia, Eight Times Up, and he was with Illusionist Opticas. And I think... 2009. 2009? 2008? Then we did Bonsai because of his humor. That's all we love in Christian. That's tone, what he's talking about. Sometimes it's very dark, but there's always humor. Let's say like that. <laughs> and we are going to continue working together. Oh, yes. We're going to do another film. And a slate, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We have a couple of uh, projects, at least one that it's already... Uh, we have a deal and others that we're talking about. And we hope that people will see what we want to do now and we'll get lots of money from Arte <laughs> this time. Um, so, but artistically and everything about uh, Christian is what we love the most.
Hola, buenos días, enhorabuena. Hi, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, I, I, congratulations, I love the film. In fact, it was so fresh, and I see the actresses now, it's very difficult to believe that they are other people. I would like to ask, specifically, that bit set a masochistic um, world of the children, for example. From what I was seeing, I saw, I saw different interpretations, and I would like to know, from the director's point of view, what's the intention? Or what's the idea behind that almost a set of masochistic of oh, the sister and the brother and at least when I was a child, my memories of when I was a child, when one's a child when you're there's a lot of violence around you, kids can be pretty cruel and and I was interested that that intense relation that exists between those two brothers and sister was a, a ca to counterpose the adult relationship that we see amongst the two sisters and obviously it has a different tone when when people are adults but you can imagine what that relationship could have been beforehand quite many of those scenes are directly inspired upon some memories of friends of mine when we were kids in, within our family. For me it was very important that those scenes be were f f looked realistic and believable. Sometimes we see films where everybody acts incredibly but the kids don't do it to, so well. And that's why there was a special emphasis in when I worked with them. Maite Neda, uh, the girl that plays Alicia, is an actress that has a lot of experience and that I've collaborated in two years in a TV series. And for Lucas, we did a lot of casting in Valdivia in the city so that he could go home every day after the shooting. Uh, about 60 kids were, test, were auditioned and, and he's a natural talent. He's a four-year-old boy when we made the film. And he behaved like a professional. He truly behaved like a professional throughout the entire shoot. And and that's it. I think a bit of that violence may look a bit too strong and powerful, but it's very important. It has to do like that feeling of those memories that the girl has where the, the fights were truly in-depth as when, when they were kids. Once again over here, You've talked about how difficult it is to start up the project vis-a-vis -vis the production and, and the support uh, provided by the state in Chile. Uh, I would like, could you talk about this uh, Chilean uh, cinema, which is the highest quality at a Latin American level, that has the greatest repercussion in international film festivals. It competes quite frequently in the Oscars, Latin American Oscars, let's say the state has not aware of that fact or, or specifically there's very little money as regards to the production of films and on the other hand with Christian I would like to know whether you're really interested in uh, noir com comedies because it seems to me that the film at, at, a, at certain moments something very macabre, very hard or something horrible is going to happen is all that violence is a latent, latent violence that is expressed physically or in words but you always believe there's going to be a dead body in the refrigerator and that's what I enjoyed most in the film producers first. No. Well, yes, to a certain extent, that this is a mystery film, a family drama. It has comical elements, but it's a mystery fa film. And, and this has to do with the type of conflict that we're talking about. Quite often, there are certain fi films that that deal with a family conflict situation and it, it changes, it changes and, and the climate and the problem is solved but it seems that in real life sometimes at a family level things don't work that way the truth is much more opaque there are solutions that are much more ambiguous the way people look at each other are very very complex enormously complex and the solutions uh, escape us I think it's much easier, the, the, it's a much slipperier arena and there's some films that are more linked to the strict way of writing and then they are perfectly solved in some cases because that's the way they're written in the script. But as I say, the question of violence 
we do insinuate a, a certain tension in the case and I said the the story of the kids my daughter taught me my sister taught me how to to uh, to um, read when I was four and when I was seven years old I step on a, on a on a nail and my small daughter and my younger sister stepped on a nail because I told her it didn't hurt me so therefore I wanted to include certain experiences and put on seeing on the screen they look a bit radical but they are things that really happen going back to financing of the film before I forgot to mention th this is a co-production Chilean French and Canadian the film received funds from Canada and France before receiving Chilean funds and going back and this is what happened to the financing of the state in Chile there's very little money because we are clearly a smaller country but what we lack our incentives so that private parties can also co-finance the films and at present we don't have incentives that other Latin American countries have and also and perhaps albeit financing was difficult for this film different initiatives were taken from the public private sector private public sector to finance the film and the distribution of certain films to achieve public money in Chile don't follow and the, the audiences don't follow Chile and maybe and cinema Chile distribution or Chile Territorio Cine that helped to the for the distribution of Chilean films and finally to the creation of audience for these films and uh, finally I think that's the way of achieving finance and and to have private financing the films do have an audience there are we hope that we will have finance in Chile as well as well I'm not too sure that can answer your question a little more I would like to add something as regards to this I share with Augusto the idea that there's a pending challenge that has to do with education but I think I'm convinced that in Chile there's a degree of cinephiles and audiovisual culture that never existed in the past the stronger than ever the problem is that there's no circuit so that those tastes and those demands can be satisfied and develop and that's being achieved through the internet so that is to say the cinephiles are growing is not linked to, to the habit of going to a cinema theater and attending and watching a movie and they said there may be a void so quote unquote in the market for oneself to go to the movies in Chile is almost impossible because the billboards are sequestered by a certain type of movies that take up 75 one single film 75 percent of the screen so there's very few options in order to to be a diversity and even of films North American films that are a little different or European or any countries from Latin America or Asia it's very difficult to see anything that's not the franchise North American film you mentioned the humor in your question and actually the humor was the reason why we uh, we have a Canadian co-producer it's not by just by chance not just by you know being opportunistic it's because when we were at Berlinale co-production forum with the project we thought well we should try to meet Canadian producers because they would dig Kristen's kind of humor we had we had this idea like this intuition and that was the case actually that's how we met Nicola Como the Canadian co-producer because this kind of humor that Kristen has I think has like links in, uh, in the Canadian understanding of the world. Yes, two things. I would like to ask you precisely about humor. How do you understand your own humor, or how would you define it? Because the humor is quite particular. The characters make you laugh in the audience without pretending to do so. It's a very particular type of humor. And also the family, you can say the family that element which is capable of the best and the worst uh, what's the family for you yes I think that that perhaps the humor is Valdivian it's from Valdivia basically um, Valdivia is the city where the family where the film takes place which is in the south of Chile located in the south of Chile and um, where life takes place in a very different way from the stereotypes of Latin America which are normally imposed as a city where it rains all the time for example where it's very green there and in the landscape is much more similar to Scotland than Brazil for example so the truth is and I think this also offers a panorama of the class of humor and that is developed it's a bit more melancholic shall we say and a bit more a bit darker on the darker side the Puerto Mor, for example, city is a bit further away, and in his, his, the films have to do with the humor, which is a bit more twisted, and it's 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 in the atmosphere basically, where sometimes life 
laughing has to do with a way of confronting which something which could also at the same time be something of a disgrace or something bad that happens. I've always tried to make my films to be more dramatic, but it just didn't work out. This film started up a, a film that I wasn't going to make a a comical film because my first shorts were comical, but slowly but surely I was going towards the dramatic side of things. This was going to be a big drama, but it ended into the comedy side of things and and of course... It has a presence of humor is very powerful in the film. And what was the other question? Yes, about the family. What's your idea of family? Yeah, what's my idea of a family? Oh, well, I think, uh, yeah, I think that as society has also changed, the idea of family is diverse, is diversifying, and it's and it becomes the object of a personal choice. Not even too far away. When I was a kid, remember in nineteen eighties, I remember there were certain family patterns that were much more rigid and strict, um, and life was less flexible. And there were many of the aspects that you had to live more than making decisions. And and I think that's changed enormously over the last, in the last few years. A family now is a difficult situation, it's a complex place, but it's also it's a necessary place where sometimes there's protection and where there's love and, there's, and where people get to meet each other. And there, I think the family has to do with this. The film has to do with this, that is say, with the idea of, of the family as a story that we all need in one way or another. The problem, Sophia's problem, is that when all of a sudden, when when they start to reveal these stories, the collapse that she goes through is almost narrative, more more than a story of a separation or the functional side of the family. What she's lacking is a story in itself, and I think that fiction plays an important role in our families, in our in our lives. Just like in this family, these characters feel disturbed because they don't manage to be able to tell and to set up a story that can seem satisfactory to them. If we look at this globally, the society and the communities we live in, the countries that we live in, cinema, theatre, literature, something similar. Uh, happens. Things have to be told and have to be ne given a name and that exercise is an exercise which is necessary to go ahead and go on and to process the experiences we have as a country or as countries. Yes, just another final point. Could you tell us how many inhabitants of Valdivia? 150,000. It's a university city. I think we've got two records in Valdivia. It's a city that's got the biggest earthquake in the history of ma mankind, registered by the Richter scale, which was in 1960. It's a city that's over 100,000 inhabitants that rains the most in the world. 300 days a year it rains. Yes, hold on a second. Microphone, please. In the front row. Just in case it's necessary. Yes, we need we need it for the translation, otherwise we can't hear her. Hi, we love the film very much. Yes, to see Gloria, especially the actress of Paulina. Uh, what was it like to work with her? We see her in a role which is not uh, so significant as we saw her last year, for example, in, in the film that received so many awards. Well, it was very pleasant to have her amongst the cast of actors and to set up a family is something interesting because the same characters and the actors start to behave in their roles and uh, like the girls they started to act as sisters, Paulina started to act as a mother of everyone offset as well. So it, it was a super great experience, Paulina is an actress that doesn't need or require any presentation at all. Um, she was one of the important elements to con to encompass this family, and also um, Chanda Roman, Shenda Roman, or uh, Christian uh, Campos, for example, is one of the protagonists of the first films by Raúl Ruiz. Just with it, having this cast was a great a great experience for us, and that's it. It was a pity that Paulina couldn't turn up. Here she, she was going to come along with us, but she had a very tight schedule and agenda, and she couldn't come along with us, unfortunately. Sorry. 
Some people didn't understand the dialogues too well because you speak... I'm sorry, we can't hear her without the microphone. She hasn't got her in her mouth. But you guys speak differently. I think she's talking about the dialogues. Yes, yeah, some people say, where are the subtitles because we couldn't understand you? Microphone. Yes, but it's not the same. A swear word in Chilean or the swear word in Spanish. I prefer the Chilean side of things, the humor and the way we speak. Where plus in the south, it's, we speak a little different than the rest of the country. And I hope that you've understood at least the emotions, if not the words. Yes, it was understood. That's why people were laughing a lot. And they were laughing. They were laughing without understanding what they were laughing about. Oh, this is funny. Microphone, please. Yes, they were laughing because of the emotion, perhaps. Yes. In Chile, we've got a way of talking which is very particular. And there's always guides that are published, uh, manuals for foreigners to see how... There's one for how does the Suave survive in the Chilean jungle. There's a book written about this because the language has a lot of metaphors and so on and so forth. So it's very difficult. And from our, where we, from our point of view, the way the, uh, the dialogues are written, what one has to say is not. There are a lot of sayings that are used but doesn't use on a day-to-day. -day. So therefore, that was also a challenge to organically sort of like say uh, dialogues that are, are written down. I'm not too sure whether you understand what I'm saying. That's like, it's not perfectly realistic in the way in which the dialogues have been written. They're a bit forced. They have a bit of distance with the real day way of speaking and they incorporate a lot of expressions which are, belong to the south part, the way we speak in the south of, Ch of Chile. Any further questions? Yes, it seems there's another one. Hi. As regards the producers, could you Say a few things about why you opted in favor of... Uh, when did you say all of a sudden, this is what I'm, that's, has hooked me to this film and to this project? I remember uh, Christian sending us uh, the script. We made this previous film upon size, so therefore we were close to him anyway. And I don't know. I loved it. With the, the precision that Christian has in the way he wrote the script. And what happens between the grandmother who doesn't talk but she's here as well and the communication in the four generations for me I said okay we've got to we've got to make it come to life little little details and then we have to do, we had to look for the money I said let's go and do it and that's the hardest part of things Hirafa produced all of Christian's uh, films and this film is very interesting in itself. Uh, the subject matter that the film addressed, the formation of the family, for example, the way it's set up, the way and the, the interrelations between the people. I think the film de deals with so interesting, su such interesting subjects. Uh, also, a uh, political level uh, to a certain extent, that it's worthwhile taking it on. I think it's a very easily to export film in that sense because it's universal and particular at the same time. Uh, Juliet, for example, the, the, uh, there are other issues that are in the eye of the hurricane, but has your life changed completely since, or, or, or since, since you've started to product? So I didn't understand the question either. No, I didn't understand what you were saying. You've been, in these months, you've been in the media, a lot of media, because of other issues, we could say, but has your life changed completely, or do you continue to work in the same way? Has your life changed in any way? Why? Because of work, Christian? Uh, things changed? No, not at all. No, not at all. No. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any further questions, and if not, thank you very much for being here.